Pre breeding can potentially bring new traits into the breeding programs, traits that we are not working today, or even uh, strength uh, the resilience of materials that we we are working in many parts of the globe. We can certainly bring new traits that or new genes that are not present in the main gene pool uh, today. I think there's a lot of things happening in biology right now where you need to be able to use again many different kind of technologies and strategies that are all so rapidly evolving so we can do things today that weren't possible three years ago because we can sequence genomes. Two ways in which uh, BOLD is really supporting us uh, in, in making uh, new varieties for farmers. The first one is uh, it, it helps us uh, continue our efforts to mobilize genetic diversity and by this I mean Going to the, uh, being able to go to the gym bank and look in these wild relatives of barley to see if we can find the needle in the haystack that will be the one giving us the extreme drought tolerance of the future or the disease uh, resistance or uh, many other traits. And for this, uh, BOLD is, is helping us. One of the big challenges we have in breeding is to increase adoption. Eh? It, then to increase adoption, we need to make sure that all the traits that we are breeding for it's uh, connected to the consumer needs. In Dry Project, we focus on the participatory approach where we involve the farmer and the other stakeholders in our programs. The reason why, he, you know, farmers is the root of farming, right? So they contribute to our work. Um, as a breeder, it's extremely important to know exactly what you're breeding for and have this kind of very targeted focus. And that, of course, becomes out of like a really big multiplex data set. So. Bold's going to produce an awful lot of data. Um, so seven crops, lots of field trials. It, what's really important is we make it really easy for people to collect data because there's really no point in doing anything unless we've got data. That's the stuff that's used to decide which plants are performing well in subsequent years. For example, when we have released the new variety, but it's not uh, prepared by the farmers, it, it still keep in storage and not go to the field. So that's why we focus on farmers and collect their opinions, their uh, favorite traits to make sure that our effort to release the new varieties. Uh, because if you don't uh, know how the farmers want to use your variety, they're unlikely to fit the farming system and, and also the environment. So we sow almost all of our trials in farmers' paddocks and, and that way not only are we testing for the environment, so the soil type and the adaptation to the climate, but we're also uh, testing our variety performance against the management and how those farmers use the varieties. So that is key. Having new varieties that can kind of withstand the stress conditions of, of the future while um, safekeeping kind of our, our nutritional needs is really important. Working with finger millets, um, it's not very common. There is nothing, not many have, have, have really done much in that, in that crop. It's through the BOLD program and the crop trust that now we can be able to see some advancements in that. Maybe something else to highlight on is that it's kind of tolerant to, to drought, so that when other crops are failing, you still have a super crop that you could maybe rely and run back to. As far as BOLD is concerned, we are working on grass pea. Nowadays, with the climate change, farmers doesn't know what they are going to harvest from the crop, like rice and wheat. But this crop is the one. It can survive the drought. It can survive the water logging. It can survive the you know, you know, salinity. It can you know, work very well under the most you know, poor uh, soils. Alfalfa can be used to produce uh, for livestock to graze and produce milk, but also uh, to produce meat. Uh, but hay, seeds and even food crops like honey uh, are supported from alfalfa flowers. It's the poorest of farmers growing in the hardest of conditions that grow, most, uh, that grow barley. So in many cases, it's the only uh, um, uh, option farmers have before abandoning their farms to the certification. I'm really excited about using all of these new technologies to kind of access the hidden gems that are stored in the gene bank that we maybe couldn't access so easily or not at all until, until recently. The data is important for the bull project, but we want it to be important for everybody who works in these crops. These crops are often really underutilized um, and they also have limited resources. So being able to make them available to other people is really important.